The grim dark is full of creatures, monsters, demons, aliens and mutants that want nothing but death to the human race. These aliens have deadly weapons that can tear a person to shreds, molest you continuously, kill you with a single shot or even vaporize you in an instant. To survive these attacks or at the very least minimize the damage, armor is needed. So here in this video we will showcase the 10 broad types of armor and war suits of the space marines which will include the various patterns of personal power armor as a single entry as well as other larger types like the Dread Knight, the Dreadnoughts, the Terminator and more in ascending order of durability, firepower and effectiveness. So let's get to it. Number 10 Scout Armor Also called the Infiltrator Armor, this is the standard combat gear worn by Space Marine Scouts before they earn the right to wear power armor. It's a modified version of an Imperial Carapace armor resized to fit an Adeptus Astartes. The armor consists of overlapping ceramide plates, providing solid defense against kinetic rounds and low power energy bolts. The non-vital areas are covered by ballistic nylon fabric or otherwise known as really tough Nike underwear, offering reduced protection without hindering mobility. Compared to power armor, Scout armor is lightweight and less cumbersome making it ideal for stealth operations and sniping and also for other purposes, you know, yeah. Its design prioritizes silence, allowing scout marines to fulfill their infiltration duties effectively. It is also used by newer recruits called the Aspirants and the Neophytes, who aren't yet fully fledged battle brothers. Number 9. Thunder Armor Although used primarily by the precursors of the Space Marines, which are the Thunder Warriors, the Thunder Armor that they wear were also used by the early Astartes. It was adapted from the combat armor used by the Techno Barbarians during the Age of Strife on Terra. This armor, known as Power Armor during that time, was used by the Emperor in his armies to reclaim Terra. The Mark I Thunder Power Armor was not fully enclosed and lacked support for vacuum environments. It focused on enhancing upper body strength like us men in the gym. Since ranged weapons were limited at that time, the armor featured a power torso enclosing the chest and arms with energy cables transmitting power from the backpack. The legs were unpowered and covered with padded breeches, though some warriors added steel plates, greaves and boots for additional protection. Yeah. However, the Mark I Thunder Power Armor was louder and less suitable for stealth operations compared to later models due to its unpowered legs. Number 8. The Standard Power Armor There are tons of different patterns of Space Marine armor, from the Mark II to the Mark VIII armors, which differ slightly from one another in aesthetics and additions and also development. There are also the Ages and the Runic armors, which are still variants of the Standard Power Armor. So that is why we will club them all in the same entry. This is a highly advanced defensive system that offers exceptional protection and versatility. It combines physical durability with sealed environmental systems, enabling the wearer to survive in harsh conditions and void environments. The armor integrates the wearer's superhuman physiology, enhancing their strength and reflexes by multiple times. The creation of new suits can take decades, leading to the practice of creating spare parts rather than the entire new suit. Different Space Marine chapters possess their own distinct types of armor and Space Marines undergo a rigorous process of implantation including a black carapace which allows them to interface instinctively with the armor. The advanced systems of power armor also monitor the Space Marines' health and provide vital medical information. The Mark VII Aquila is as of now, as of the 42nd millennium, the standard pattern for most of the firstborn Marines. Number 7. The Mark X Armor Why is it on a different entry? Because the latest development in Space Marine Power Armor is not meant for the firstborn Marines, but was created intentionally by Belisarius' call for the Primaris Marines, which are bigger and heavier as well as having three more gene seed organs and an extra testicle. However, needing an upgrade in the Black Carapace as well as the armor in order to function in perfect unison with the enlarged and more powerful Marine. The Mark X is intended to be a modular design of power armor more versatile than its predecessors and drawing upon the most advanced patterns of the past, particularly the Mark IV Maximus and the Mark VIII Aaron patterns. All variants of the Mark X also allows for the utilization of a new breed of Astartes weaponry, such as the Mark II Call Pattern Bolt Rifles, the Neo Vault Guys, the Assault Bolters, the Bolt Storm Gauntlets, the Plasma Incinerators, and many others. Number 6. The Flight Capable Power Armor so, all those that we have discussed are standard power armors for the Astartes. They are terrestrial armor meant to function on the ground. The next types are the flying armors or more specifically flight-capable armors. 
They are basically the same as the standard and the Primaris armors, but with an addition of a jump pack or a jetpack. The Mark 7 Mars pattern jump pack is the standard equipment of the first Bonds. Whereas for the Primaris, it is the Mark 10 Gravis armor, which has a smaller but more effective jump pack, retractable helmet shield, and a more robust reinforced ceramide structure intended to withstand the forces of an assault from low orbit through a planetary atmosphere insertion. Jump packs have come a long way. They were initially seen to be big, like commercial aeroplane jet engines with a huge multi bladed propeller air intake. Now with the Primaris Gravis Jump Pack, humanity has somehow been able to compress and miniaturize the clumsy technology for better effectiveness. Number 5. The Terminator Armor The Terminator Armor, also known as the Tactical Dreadnought Armor, is an advanced form of combat gear designed for the Space Marine Terminators. It prioritizes power and durability over maneuverability, making it ideal for close quarters melee and ranged combat. It is used when standard power armor cannot provide sufficient protection. It is a revered and ancient battle harness reserved for the finest and bravest warriors of the Space Marine chapter. The armor consists of a thick ceramide plasteel composite plates mounted on an adamantium exoskeleton. Servo-assisted interfaces connect with the wearer's neurological and muscular systems, enhancing movement and strength. Terminator armor is exceptionally durable, capable of withstanding firepower that could penetrate tank armor. It is the heaviest combat armor in the Imperial arsenal, allowing the wearer to endure significant punishment. In addition, it provides the necessary mobility and serves as a formidable heavy weapons platform in open field battles, helping out the standard battle brothers. Number 4. The Centurion War Suit So imagine being naked, yeah. Now you're clad in power armor, but the weather is too cold, so you put on another larger power armor over the pre-existing power armor. Now you're in trouble when you want to take a shit. These suits feature thick ablative plates of ceramide providing exceptional protection against all but the most powerful weapons. Centurions are specialist weapons deployed as line breakers, prioritizing durability over speed. The armor does not interfere with the Space Marine's black carapace and does not require surgical implantation like dreadnoughts. Space Marines undergo extensive training to pilot Centurion suits, particularly in managing the enormous recall and complexities of using siege drills or heavy weaponry. Assault Centurions excel in close combat, breaking through enemy strongholds while Devastator Centurions are used in siege warfare or confined quarters. Assault Centurions wield two siege drills with flamers, melter guns, hurricane bolters, or ironclad assault launchers. Devastator Centurions, however, are armed with twin heavy bolters, last cannons, or graph cannons with attached graph amplifiers. Number 3. Dreadnoughts Seen in many variants, patterns, and classes, these are used when a Space Marine is mortally wounded in battle but still possesses valuable combat knowledge and experience. Their near-death bodies are interred within an armored sarcophagus, which is then integrated into a cybernetic chassis of a dreadnought. The sarcophagus allows the interred Space Marine to control and operate the war machine, essentially granting him a second chance at continuing their service to the chapter and the Emperor. These walkers are heavily armed and armored, capable of withstanding significant damage on the battlefield. Dreadnoughts often carry a variety of lethal weaponry such as heavy boulders, last cannons, missile launchers, or close combat weapons like power fists or chain fists, and also big blades. They excel in both range and close quarters combat, providing invaluable firepower and durability to their respective forces. Dreadnoughts are revered relics within Space Marine chapters and are only awakened in times of great need and when the fallen warrior's expertise is required. They are symbols of honor, sacrifice, and the indomitable spirit of the Space Marines. Number 2. The Invicta Warsuit With a Dreadnought, you have to be almost dead to be in one. With this, you don't have to be. Great, isn't it? The Invicta Warsuit is designed to operate as an armored frontline unit capable of leading assaults and breaking enemy lines. It features a powerful reactor core that fuels its systems and provides the necessary power for its various weapons and defensive mechanisms. Equipped with advanced armor plating and layered ceramide, the Invicta Warsuit offers exceptional protection to the Primaris Space Marine that is piloting it. Its design allows for enhanced maneuverability, enabling it to navigate the challenging terrain and engage enemies in close quarters combat. The warsuit is armed with a range of formidable weaponry, including heavy bolters, twin iron hail heavy stubbers, incendium cannons, and all those weapons that a dreadnought can carry. In addition to its offensive capabilities, the Invicta warsuit can be outfitted with a variety of defensive systems such as smoke launchers if you want to hide, and an auto-reactive servo system. 
These features enhance the survivability of the Invicta Warsuit in the battlefield. And number one, the Dread Knight. Essentially a heavy armored battlesuit designed to house a Grey Knight Space Marine in a modified form of a Dreadnought, it combines the power and resilience of a Dreadnought with the speed and agility of an infantry unit. The pilot is psychically linked to the Dread Knight, allowing for enhanced coordination and control. Standing several times taller than a standard Space Marine, the Dread Knight is an imposing presence on the battlefield, especially against bloodthirsters and even greater demons. It is equipped with powerful weapons including a heavy incinerator or a heavy side cannon which are capable of unleashing devastating firepower against demonic and psychic foes. Additionally, it wields a massive close combat weapon such as a greatsword or a hammer, a nemesis hammer, enabling it to engage in brutal close quarters combat. The Dread Knight is heavily protected by thick ceramite plating, psychic walls, runes and a force field generator making it resilient against enemy attacks. Its enhanced mobility allows it to traverse difficult terrain and engage enemy enemies with speed and precision. The Grey Knight's Dread Knights are rare and precious assets reserved for the most critical battles against the forces of chaos. So those are the 10 types of Space Marine power armors and war suits. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Do hit the like button for support and subscribe. But most of all, smash the bell icon for regular updates and new videos here on this channel. Take care, boys.